Hi guys, uh, another vinyl update. Um, this time I will show you some things that I bought not online, I uh, bought them on, in stores and also I didn't show last time. So yeah, there were some things I just left out because it was way too long and I don't want to make really long videos. And uh, it feels like this one is going to be one of them, one of the long videos that I intend to make short, but anyway. so. Uh, before I start, just a few comments, like uh, it's been a really good run for the VC and I've been seeing a lot of videos from different people that I, you know, I sort of follow, so this is really good. Um, the other thing is, uh, yes, I, I keep forgetting, um, I wanted to thank him, uh, you know, publicly. Uh, I, if you remember, like a couple of videos ago, I posted... Um, one showing the Verma uh, LP Sunrunner and I said that uh, you know Trouble in Mind had put in the wrong uh, was it that they had the wrong uh, download co code or I don't remember or it wasn't working or something like that and one of the one of the VC members uh, co contacted me he was Mark 8... Uh, 8... Mark 108 Mark 108, no no numbers, it's just you know written out. He has a channel, he does post some videos every now and again. He's doing CDs mostly, new stuff, but really good, interesting. So thanks very much, Mark. I wanted to say thank you uh, because, you know, you hooked me up with the download and, you know, I, I should have had it in the first place. Anyway, Trouble in Mind is a little bit troublesome kind of um, uh, label. They haven't been. They're not very professional, unfortunately, and they have. They make good music. You know, they issue good music. They don't make good music, but they issue good music, and it's quite unfortunate. But there you have it. It's one thing. And another thing I want to say is that if I I usually respond to all the messages. If you send me a message, or you know, if you uh, put a comment on uh, the videos, I always respond. Um, if I don't respond to you, there is something wrong. So just you know, put it out there because there was some uh, some VC member. I don't think that he's doing any videos, and he posted a comment that was just it was impossible for me to respond. Uh, he probably doesn't have a um, G Plus account or something like that. Anyway, leave that aside and um, on to the music. This is what you came for, right? I'm looking at the time. It's two minutes. It's all right. It's not that long. It's not two minutes, almost three minutes, but it's all right. So anyway, yes. <coughs> so usually I begin with uh, what's playing in the background, and um, it's uh, it's quite rare. Uh, but I, I think I've shown only one band, and that band is this one, which is just, uh, where is it? Yeah. Oh, as you can see, I have a new CD. Um, I bought the matching CD for the amplifier, so I'm um, quite happy with that. Yeah, I've shown this one. Oh, and I've shown this one as well. The Monia Nymphy, uh, um, yeah, which is like a pagan sort of version of um, a Greek pagan sort of version of Dead Can Dance. Uh, loads of yeah, I'm started talking about this one. Uh, yeah, I've shown one one Greek band. This is another Greek band. Well, it's another Greek artist. Uh, it's this one basically. So it's uh, Kostas Tournas Astronomira. This is how it works basically. It's, it's a gatefold. Uh, and um, yeah, as you can see here in a very glam rock kind of uh, setting. This is our issue. Um, it's out on Anazitisi Records, which is this one. I don't know if you can see it. They've reissued it like, I don't know, a couple of years ago maybe. And the reason why I got this one is that I was intrigued. I, 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 I found some stuff on YouTube and I sort of liked it. But mainly because I saw, the first time I saw this record was in, um, uh, in Spain. Uh, I went to... Wawa Records, uh, the actual record shop, the actual record, yeah, the actual Wawa record shop in Barcelona, and um, it, 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 
it was, yeah, it was the best record shop I've ever been in my life, basically. And uh, it's the kind of shop where you deduce from the stuff that you know that the stuff you don't know are equally amazing. And yeah, that's pretty much it, really. So you flip through records and you're like, wow, this is amazing, this is amazing, this is fantastic, this, I want this, I want this, I want this, this is amazing, this is fantastic, I want this. I don't know what the hell this is, this looks so cool. And the majority of it is like, I don't know what the hell this is, this looks really cool. And they, they had a section where they had international stuff. So they had Japanese uh, records, they had, um, well, what's that band's name, I, I, I forget now. Anyway, they had some really interesting stuff from all around the world. And they had this as well. I didn't buy it. I was like, I showed it to my girlfriend and look, Costas Tournas, it's unbelievable. Anyway, Costas Tournas was in Paul. I think that people might know Paul. P O L L. Uh, and um, yeah, he, he split up from that band and he made this one. This is his first solo album. Um, very Bowie-esque, uh, Astronira means uh, star dreams, it's, it's a non-existent word, it's like made up, but yeah, it's, it's all about space basically, so it's a glam rock space album, pretty much like, uh, I would say, David Bowie, uh, you know, uh, when did this come out, 1970-what? 1973, so yeah, uh, Ziggy Stardust was already out, so I guess that this was uh, pretty much, uh, you know, informed by that kind of thing. And yeah, it's actually good. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I would even think of listening, like, I don't know, three, four years ago even. But it's good. I like it. It's, uh, yeah, check it out. Um, yeah, so let's go on to more international stuff. No, actually I will not show international stuff. I will show one more record that is actually Greek. Uh, probably not of uh, everyone's taste. Uh, it's this one. Let me take it out. It's black. It's this one. Uh, it's called The uh, Atarax Kinesis Ichias. I don't expect you to <laughs> even attempt to pronounce it. Uh, it's basically causing, uh, um, uh, causing, uh, how would you call it, uh, a disturbance, that's what it means. And it is uh, a compilation of uh, punk bands from the early 80s, Greek back punk bands from the 80s. Um, you will not know a single uh, band from here, and uh, yeah which makes sense because they just never did a lot out of this country and it's all in Greek as well and um, yeah it's good fun I actually saw this an original copy back in the day but 1980 whatever I think this one came out 1984 so I saw uh, a copy of this record in 1988 uh, I was with some friends and we were out and um, you know we were exchanging records and, uh, you know, this record, I happened to, you know, uh, to see it because somebody was giving it to another person uh, to listen to. And uh, I was intrigued and I always wanted to actually listen and have it. And, yeah, here I am, I don't know, 25 years on and, yeah, I got it. Reshoot, of course, uh, not the original. Unfortunately, it has a really nice texture cover, the original and all that, which is very unpunk like because it's... You know, it, uh, it gave some emphasis to the packaging, but there you have it. Anyway, enough of Greek stuff that don't interest you at all. I will start with the easy stuff. Easy stuff. Easy, easy, easy. Brian Jonestown Massacre. Uh, auf, uh, how the hell did they come up with this title? I have no idea. Anyway, this is the... the previous album, because they have a new one out, uh, came out in 2013, I would say, I want to say, and um, this is a title, I don't know if you can actually, there's no way, I, I cannot even read it, sorry, it's glare, I mean, it's glare for you, glare for me as well, I, can't, I don't remember the title, screw it, it's Brian Jonestown Massacre, 
it's amazing, I love it. <clears throat> Might not be the very best one, but it's really good. I would say that this is the most European album I've heard from the Brian Jones Town Massacre, and it's, it's really good, really good, really good. Um, it has some bits here that remind me of um, Stereo Lab because they have this female vo female vocals and this female vocals. They have female vocals basically. So yeah, it's it's quite good. Really like really really like it. And next up, uh, Greg Padilla uh, Sona. Uh, this is out on uh, Strange Fish. Um, I didn't know about this Greg Padilla guy. Uh, I found out about him uh, when I got Strange Fish box set. Now it had uh, the, the box set started off with I think Craig Padilla, a uh, 12 inch by Craig Padilla, and it was just spacey, droney, crowd rock kind of thing. It was the best thing in there. I eventually got to sell the box set because. Uh, the first record and the last record were amazing. The middle bits were like meh, so and so. I wasn't hugely impressed with it. And um, yeah, I decided to settle it uh, to make some space when I had a big space issue <laughs> here. So I, I sold it. But I remember Craig Padilla. And actually, it was Brett that showed it again. He said, Oh, it's amazing. I had seen it and I was like, oh, should I buy it, should I not buy it, and, you know, he pushed me and, you know, he pushed Chris as well, he bought it and he said, yeah, this is amazing, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I have to buy it, so I did, and, yeah, it is, um, uh, spacey electronics, basically, so, not much unlike, um, sort of, um, Klaus uh, Schulze, yeah, very, very close to what it sounds like. Uh, easy, no introductions needed. Recent reissue, Alice Coltrane, uh, Monastic Trio, yeah, on Superior Viaduct, uh, Spiritual, da da da, you know the drill, yeah, pretty much. I mean, do, do I need to say anything about this? No. I don't think I do, so I won't just show it. Job done, easy. This one, yay! So, one of my favorite artists uh, of late, uh, last couple of years really, Oren Nambarchi, and here he is um, on a improvised set uh, performed in 2013 on Tusk Festival in Newcastle upon Tyne and he's uh, it's done with Neil Campbell and uh, Mike Flower um, Mike Flower, I, I know all three of them obviously I know and um, Abarchi drummer, guitarist, uh, electronics, experimental he's, he's done tons of stuff and most of it I would recommend checking out Neil Campbell, I think he was with the Vibra Cathedral Orchestra, which is like a massive drone band, it's just unbelievable stuff. And he's done some um, solo work as well, which is really, really good. And Michael Flower is... I don't know where he was, I know him, but Mike Flower, but I don't remember where the hell he was playing. Anyway, two long pieces. In effect, it's like one long piece in reality. It just builds up and builds up, and then on se second second side, just drums come in, and it's just chaos. It's really good, really good, really good. Worth checking out. Really good. The Thirty Nine Clocks, out of Germany, nineteen eighty. What? Came out in nineteen eighty. I want to say 83, but um, might be wrong. This is our issue, as you can tell from you know the semi obby fake obby street strip on uh, luxury products. And the 39 Clocks were were a band, basically these two guys. 
guitars, drums, I think. They did have drums. No, yeah, they had. They played a little bit of everything. And they have a drum machine. They had a drum machine. And their sound is like um, a garagey, more guitar led suicide, basically. So, yeah, this, if suicide had, you know, prop. You know, they, they played more instruments other than that that thing, that, that broken farfisa or whatever it was, then they would sound like this. Really good. Check them out. Uh, yes. You know, this, there's no way. I mean, no metal? What's happening? It's just... Yeah, Burzum, uh, I will not even try to pronounce the title. Uh, this is their, I want to say their third, second album. Yeah, I think it was Aske, and then it was one more, and I think it was this one. This is the first album that Burzum have their fully realized sort of sound, which is just you know, that kind of hybrid of ambient, atmospheric black metal, which is not, you know, just blast beats and, you know, growling vocals and shrieks and whatnot. There's a lot more substance in the music. And it's really interesting to watch uh, Varg Vikerens. Vikerens, yes. Uh, Varg, anyway. I can, I'm pretty sure about his first name. Uh, Varg playing these... Uh, acoustically, uh, you can find the video. I think it is somewhere. Uh, you know, Burzum um, uh, acoustic, Burzum or something like that. Check it out. And you know, and he plays some uh, songs from here. Don't expect him to play like you know the whole thing. He can just play some riffs. But yeah, this is really good stuff. Really good stuff. Bizarro album, 17 minutes. Oh, I'm doing really good with time. It's unbelievable. This has never happened before. So, a Bizarro album. Uh, this was uh, an inspired by a um, rather controversial person from um, XVC member. Uh, he is uh, known as the Infinite Groove uh, in the VC. He just can't, you know, he stopped doing videos. He just disappeared from the face of the earth. He did a subgroup that um, I was a member of. Uh, he posted this one, and then he disappeared. I mean, no, he didn't disappear. He just the group sort of died for no apparent reason. But he does have a good taste in music, and he showed this one. This is. I will take my eye out. That would be quite amazing and amusing, I guess, as well. So he showed this this album. This is called um, Eternal Internal Landscapes, and it's two musicians, L. R. J. Martins and Ada van Hoebeke. You can see this, and it's on Guira Records. Now, to some, Guira Records might say quite a bit, and to some it might say nothing. Um, I suggest to the people that uh, Aguirre says nothing to, to check the label out because it has some really nice uh, spaced out, psychedelia, electronics, uh, really out there stuff that is really, yeah, it's just out there. Um, and this fits a bill. It, it is, it is an odd sounding record, I have to admit. Not in a bad way, not in like, you know, it's noisy, it's disjointed. It is... I haven't listened to it enough to, to, to give you a good um, good description of. Um, check it out, it's really good, really good. I like it, I, I, I honestly do like it. <coughs> and last but uh, not least... Uh, Stefan was showing this the other day, um, it's this one, uh, it's, it's pop, I know, sorry, apologies, FK, FKA Twigs, uh, LP1, this is the Deluxe, ooh, Deluxe, 180 gram, includes from 7 inch and 4 art prints and download code, I have to use the download code at some point. Um, 
Kate Twiggs. Um, I've I read an, not an interview, uh, a review of it on um, a glowing review, I might add, on um, uh, the Guardian. Uh, they do a very good uh, section on music every Friday and I read about it and it was like yeah this is really good uh, amazing fantastic you know just get it five stars whatever so I went on Spotify I checked it out I played a couple of songs and it was like okay this is R&B uh, this is R&B inspired like electronic music um, not much you know, it's, it doesn't have that novelty, if you like. At least, you know, that's what I thought at the mo at the time. Uh, because I've listened to The Weeknd, for example, which is like, you know, that kind of neo R&B kind of thing. I was like, oh, come on. But um, for one reason or another, I got back to it and listened to it. And I listened to it, uh, you know, trying to think without having all that background of, you know, having to listen to electronic music, to, you know, uh, Portishead, to um, Massive Attack and whatnot, uh, Aphex Twins, uh, Twins, Twins, Twin, um, yeah, and all this, all, all this that makes me, you know, oh yes, I've listened to that kind of stuff before, you know, while smoking a pipe and um, talking to the grandchildren, I guess. But yeah, if you, if you listen to it with fresh ears and just not be bothered too much about the R&B elements, this is a very well produced, very interesting sounding and just really good record. And um, yeah, I recommend it. I recommend it. It's, it's quite good. It will not... Um, and... <sighs> In my opinion, this is the kind of record that will become a future classic in the same vein like, you know, um, Portishead are, for example. I, it's, it's totally, you know, plausible. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, that's, that's me. Uh, might be wrong and, you know, in a year's time be, like, you know, ridiculed, which I doubt. But, yeah. Anyway, that's my update. I will probably be receiving a few more records in the coming days. Uh, I have some pre I have some orders basically on Norman Records. I have one since May, and they're still waiting for one uh, um, or an Abarchi actually <laughs> LP to to come. Hopefully, it will come soon, uh, and a couple of others were other ones as well. So probably we'll have some new things um, coming through. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it. Uh, leave me your comments, like the video, dislike it, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff, unsubscribe, uh, which some people actually do, um, because it's my sort of my day job, um, you know, digital stuff. I do have, um, you know, an obsession looking at, you know, numbers and analytics and all that, so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of sad in a way, but uh, yeah, I carry my work home in this way, which is not good. But anyway, I do it because, you know, that's why I do all day anyway. So and I noticed that people just, you know, subscribe watching the videos. Like, oh, that guy again, unsubscribe. So anyway, I welcome you to it because apparently you're not into this kind of stuff. So anyway, yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, I will be seeing you around. I will probably do... And now spinning video as well because I have, uh, yeah, I've I've kept the stack of records that I've been, been stuff that I've been picking out of the shelves. So I will be doing that. Twenty four minutes, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's more than enough. Anyway, I will see you around. <laughs>